Do you know what time it is? Oh, yeah. We're not hearing for some reason. Smoothie's talking. He's saying some really good stuff, Randy. Oh. But I can't hear him. I don't know why. The speaker's not muted. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, you know what? He's probably muted because we're not. Um... Well, that's all right. You know what? Here. <clears throat> I'm gonna... We'll do it through. Uh... Here. I'll just go ahead and. Here. I'm gonna... We'll do it through. Uh... Here. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and that, that we're going to get echo. <laughs> just, just, just mute everything. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, one and all. Randy, give a little fist pump. You're up on screen. <laughs> I am Johnny Q of CEO Johnny Q, <laughs> the aloof goop. This is Randy at Master Control. God love him. <laughs> uh, we've been struggling with a bunch of issues today, trying to get our first uh, real stream on Twitch. And we're trying to use Restream, which means that we can stream on simultaneously on YouTube and Twitch. Randy, there should be two sets of chats to be mindful of. Um, my coffee just spit in my eye. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. What did you do to your coffee? I don't know. Apparently, I didn't like it. Oh. Huh. Well, you might try being kinder to your coffee. I pay for it every day. You think that'd be enough? Well, yeah, because I know that's what makes I mean, me I, feel good. Some is people when people might pay extra for that, but I'm not one of them. So. <laughs> I know when people pay for me. What I want to do, Randy, is spit on them. So I think I'm in line with your coffee right now. I think I'm, I'm team coffee at the moment, Randy. So uh, welcome one and all to Addition Through Distraction, your twice a week uh, live stream podcast where we work on nerdy art stuff and uh, we talk about things that interest us. Um, I am, again, your host, Johnny Q of Studio Johnny Q. And uh, let's have our titular moment right here at the get-go, Randy. Um, I noticed, uh, I noticed, I didn't notice anything. <laughs> I'm talking, words are coming, falling out of my mouth and I don't even know what they are. <laughs> um, the uh, post-alluvian, which means after the flood. Um, we, we had a uh, flood that happened and, and, and the uh, underwater layer that is studio johnny q we took on about two or three inches of water luckily randy i have a lot of experience in dealing with floods mm -hmm. i had a um for our listeners um i <laughs> that when i had got a divorce and i moved into a, a buddy's basement and the day i moved was on a friday the 13th and free, an, free, and, free. and an hour after i moved in randy finished everything Rain came in, flooded the basement. <laughs> An hour. 
I found my cat who was still in the, the, the carrier box floating on the water in the box. <laughs> yeah, you can tell, you know, you knew Moxie. She loved that. <laughs> um, and, and then it uh, flooded seven times in two years. So I learned uh, how to live in flooding spaces. So luckily there was very, 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 very minor damage. Um, we try to keep everything off the floor by two or three inches. So uh, it worked out. Just, just a couple of things that I think uh, got some damage, but all in all pretty good. So today is uh, one of the things that we did have to do though, is we had to pull up the carpet tiles. And Randy, thank you so much for coming that day. Again, Randy over at the Master Control. Give another fist pump, Randy. Yeah. Uh, Randy came over and let's see, I'll show you guys the, the floors that we've, we've been working on. We got that puzzle interlocking foam in there right now. Um, so Randy came and removed all the, the carpet tiles. And man, it is fun to, it's like you look at the space. I think I was telling Carrie this last night. I looked back at the room. This is day seven post flood. And it's like almost everything is where it was. It's almost as if nothing happened, <laughs> except for everything in this room has been moved, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, that's kind of crazy. But uh, so here we are post flood, uh, trying to get it going. Today is our first uh, Twitch stream. So if you're a part of the Twitch audience that's joining us, uh, welcome. Uh, and then Randy, can you see chats? Can you see Twitch chat and YouTube chat? Not yet. Okay, so if you could work towards that. Uh, I don't know what's in the description, so I won't even talk about <laughs> those things until I know more about them. Uh, Randy, one of the things, though, that I did was thinking about working on, and especially uh, we normally uh, stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, noon to 2, um, but we had some issues today, obviously, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to work on here is we've been uh, making this castle, oh, our styrofoam castle. And uh, it did survive the flood, so yay. Uh, and was, wasn't too concerned since it was, well, it's styrofoam. It but, looks like the, uh, it looks like Twitch is still using the old title, the testing title for some reason. Oh, is it? I don't know what happens if I refresh. Okay. Okay, I just refresh the browser and it works. Okay. It updated. So I was thinking about trying to work on maybe a symbol in this, uh, Randy, putting some of our, our cameras. We've got our, our above camera. I was thinking about maybe doing a little action like so and working on this uh putting together quasi town some of the the of this so i think that's what i am actually going to work towards randy and while you get a little comfortable with the uh the twitch interface yeah i'm not seeing a way to pop out chat on twitch at the moment okay i'm working on getting the youtube one up okay i thought that there was that's I, I, you know, you look at so many things, you forget what you've looked at and what you haven't looked at and what you've done and what you have not done. I'm going to move my microphone over this way and maybe hopefully make it a little easier to hear me and I'll try to project a little bit as well. Normally we're working at the art station, but you caught us on an odd day today. All right. Randy, here's some uh, monsters I want to put into our our quasi town that I got at the local comic book shop. I have this amazing comic book store. In this video, I'll show you how to. Hold on. Got wrong a, button. Got an amazing local comic store, Pack Rat Comics. And down in the basement, they often have some old figures and things like that. And so I found some of these old figures at really cool prices that I'm going to have as like giants attacking your castle. So we've got that. Got a little Schleck. Monster, undersea monster here as well. And here's those. Some of those. And this guy is ready to take a look at this guy. He's like got like a dude that rides on his back. So nice. Good, good stuff. Alright, so clear out the space here. Making a space for mm, us. Here we go. And let's see here. All right. Here's your YouTube chat. 
Awesome. That was a pain in the ass getting to it for some reason, but hmm. here it is. And these, uh, I'll talk about the kind of process that we did on these castles. You can see some of our previous streams on YouTube. Um, Studio Johnny Q. If you're interested in seeing some of the work that we've done, also I've, on the Instagrams, I post daily and I post a lot of progress photos of these. But this was this packing foam that we've just strategically cut. And um, actually the the dimples on this, we hit it with a heat gun and that actually raises it to where this was smooth plastic and makes it now textured dimpled plastic. Let me see the dimples. Which... Oh, yeah, he's so cute. cute. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to <laughs> and, uh, and so that makes it easier to dry brush and to put washes on. And then the, the bricks are XPS foam that we cut and put into a box of rocks, literally, to uh, texture them. And, As um, in dumbass? What's that? Oh, no, sorry. No. We put it in a dumbass? A Is that box of rocks. Yeah. I, I As in dumbass. It. A box of rocks. <laughs> Uh, and uh, everything gets hit with Mod Podge per Black Magic Crafts prescription, which is just Mod Podge paint, and that's kind of your first layer of protection. Really helps seal a lot of this plastic. And then from there, it's a lot of um, dry brushing and ink wash, dry brushing, ink wash, dry brushing, ink wash, until so rinse and repeat until you. You found a spot that you're happy with. Since the M50 is being touchy, um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over so you can see the Twitch chat if it'll cooperate. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that works. Yeah, thank you. There's a Q that we paid. CD Johnny Q. The Q stands for flood. <laughs> All right. That. So, we got a working space here. No. Homemade. Guys, we're working on. And, let's see here. Oh. Yeah, I think that one play nice. How are you doing over there, Randy? It's not liking it. Okay, no worries. As long as you can keep a keep an eye on it, just in case. Because my, my hope is that here with Twitch we'll get more casual. Stop revise. And if not, you know we'll we'll tweak it a little bit more. And you can make the, that camera underneath it a lot smaller if you want, Randy, to give more real estate to prioritize. Our background here is just some poster board that we, we painted up with some craft paint. Easy peasy, gave us a little skyline to work with. Won't you take me to that quasi town? Won't you take me to that quasi town? All right. Well, we now have a palette to work with. Oh! Right. So, what can we start with here? The two main pieces that we have are the biggies. So we've got that, and we've got a piece. And let's move these guys out of the way. And we need more lights. There, that helps a little bit. Yeah, hopefully that. 
better to work with. So I gotta figure out if I wanna stack these, because these could be stacked. And now let me know when you're able to engage in a fruitful conversation, my friend. of various pieces and all, again this was all pretty much just some packing styrofoam what was our last stream JV Tuesday it was a week ago what's today Tenth, mm -hmm. so we've been the third. It's funny because I don't remember National Cold Cold Cuts Day. <laughs> oh, National Cold Cuts Day! I what thought it said that? Cold Nuts Day for a second. <laughs> no, I do remember National Cold Nuts Day. <laughs> That's pretty much any day in winter time. Here. <laughs> yeah, is that the truth? All right. We say winily to the people who live in <laughs> much, much colder climes. <laughs> yes, but we say it haughtily to the people like on the, the California coast. <laughs> I remember I was watching a stream and uh, I was a podcast, Adam Savage. I think it was uh, just one where they just around talking. He was talking about the weather and how cold it was. And he's like, okay, now first off, everybody that's in the Midwest, I know, I get it. I'm being a crybaby, but it's really cold. It's like 60, you know? And it's like, it's like we're unseasonably cold. Yeah. You get acclimated. Like. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, your your dress and the buildings <coughs> that you're in, you know, how, how well. Mm. It's like, you know, here, everything we have is, has a double set of doors, right? Because it blocks out the cold air. But, like, yeah. when you go further south, that's not as common. Yeah. Well, maybe now it wasn't back in the day. But... And so I can remember it, being in like um, I can remember being in Florida one time when uh, insulation values differ greatly. Oh between. yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. Like with the XPS foam, mm -hmm. the aforementioned XPS foam, here, Randy. Yeah. Uh, I guess um, BMC he helps people be able to find it because a lot of places you can't get this at your local store. Oh wow. Because that's don't, crazy. They don't insulate right, so they don't carry it, and getting this stuff shipped is super costly. So. Every, every place should, you know, maybe it's a specific type, a specific R value or something, because everybody should uh, should have some insulation, at least nowadays, and new new construction and stuff. Uh, you like would think, my, you would think, but uh, apparently not, because some people really do have a hard time huh. finding them in certain Weird. locales. They're just, it's just really hard to find. And that they must use, also, they, maybe they use a different type of insulation than yeah. XPS foam. And so I wonder if like some people, some places have banned foam, maybe, I wonder. I, Back, I don't know. you know, like in the, what was it, in the 80s and 90s. And then also it, overseas. They were trying to ban like all foam, or all styrofoam, specifically. Right. Also um, overseas, certain places. it has its own set of challenges, which makes sense yeah. as well, you know. Um, oh, and here's a couple of, you can see some before and afters, so. Is an idea of what we <laughs> start with. All right. 
I feel like I'm missing you some pieces. Oh. I definitely am missing some pieces. Looks like we missed National Oreo Day. Aww. National Absinthe Day. Aww. National Cheese Doodle Day. Well, that's the one that hurts my heart. <laughs> National I will multiple... doodle. I will make a doodle of some cheese later. <laughs> National Multiple Personality Day. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. That, that was the fifth. Uh, Thursday, March fifth. You know, they don't even know if that's an actual thing. It's not, it's not, uh... What do they call it? Disassociated disorder now, I think. Yeah, but it's not even agreed whether or not that symptom of multiple personality disorder, mm. if there's actually been a legitimate case of it. At least that's, uh, five years ago when I took a, a parapsychology, not parapsychology, the, um, abnormal psychology course. At that point, it still, uh, was debated. And I guess in the 70s, Randy, mm -hmm. there was a, a famous case uh, within our city of a, I think it was a murder in that, and oh, somebody really? claimed multiple personality disorder in the 70s. Huh. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it is a topic of discussion of the validity and legitimacy of... I heard, this is crazy, you just made me think of like people claiming different weird defenses and stuff. Uh -huh. um, I forget where this was, but... Uh, well, I was going to assume something, but we won't, we won't do that. Um, yeah, I don't remember where this was exactly, but someplace it, they have a gay defense, I guess. So this guy killed his neighbor. So it wasn't his fault because he was gay? He Because the guy... He said the guy came on to him. And it sent him into a gay rage because this guy came on to him. Well, the, and he, he got off on that because, and not like got off on that, but got off legally on that because uh, because the guy was gay. Uh, they had a, a, a gay rage defense. But it was like, oh, well, the guy came on to him. And so it's okay. He killed him. He was gay. He was fine. Huh. <laughs> what? When was this? Wow. Uh, I heard about this like two years ago, I think. Where was this? I mean, draw your assumptions. It, it wasn't in Ohio, although it could have this been. This was. You're saying this happened in the United States in the last. It, this was of in years? the United States within. I I heard about it about two years ago, so I don't know when okay. it actually occurred, but it was like. I would assume within the last ten or twenty. I would yeah. assume. I think it was probably within the last ten. Huh. Yeah, yeah I'll have to, to do some fact finding on that. Yeah. One. That's like some places just have crazy laws on the book still. Like, like it's illegal them. to whistle underwater on Sundays. Like, why is that even on the books at all? Yeah, I think they call them blue laws, don't they? Uh, I don't uh, know. Blue laws, Sunday laws, I think sometimes they call them. Sunday laws. Yeah, a lot of them have to do with like things you can't do on Sundays. Remember when everything used to be closed on Sundays? Nobody <laughs> worked on Sundays when we were kids? Yeah, Nothing was open. I was mad when I was trying to buy some alcohol on a Sunday and they didn't want to let me. I was like, that is still a thing. <laughs> But the, yeah, that was, is a, uh, during certain times, like certain when, when I was in college, you had to wait. I mean, it's been so long since I've tried to buy alcohol anywhere. I don't like you can uh, buy you. Yeah. It was like, but like in, in college, day, yeah, you had to wait. You couldn't buy beer on Sundays, right? But, but yeah. you can buy beer on Sundays now, like at the local Kroger or whatever. Hmm. That's not a problem. But I was at like a gas station trying to buy a bottle of wine or something. And yeah, and I couldn't because it was Sunday and they couldn't oh. sell on Sunday. But some, so it's like some places can and some places can't. Yeah, but. there's still like dry counties and stuff somewhere. Yeah, that's true too. There's, uh, what was that down in Logan? Um, I don't know if it's still the case, but a couple years ago it was where uh, you had to like drive one street over from a place where you were trying to get it because you couldn't get it there. Like you couldn't get it at the Walmart, I don't think. Right. right yeah. there at like 33 and um, I can't remember the crossroad right there, but right there, uh, one of the Logan exits at 33. Um, so you had to drive like into town somewhere and I guess it was right across the county line. There was a gas station where you could, <laughs> but it was crazy. It's practically like right across the street. I remember we went to, from... we went to Kentucky once and, like, oh, yeah. and it was like a dry county and they're like, you have to go over the freeway and you can buy Yeah. Beer. On the other side of the there. freeway. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's when, uh, that's we when stopped I... and, and, uh, it was right after we were at the Renaissance festival yeah. and we were going down to, uh, tree climbing <laughs> yeah and i remember we stopped at a gas station and 
I had gotten elf ears. I had my elf ears on from the Renaissance elf ears Festival. Were weird, were real. <laughs> Are those his real ears? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, the better to hear you with. <laughs> That's the same story. time we had the uh, we had the camp on. We got like the last campsite available. It was at night and it was on a steep slope. <laughs> oh yes, it was. So you're, like sliding down. And the I was floor afraid. Of the tent. I, was, I was afraid we were gonna get strangled on the wire. It was a wire. I don't know if you remember, like a electric wire. I went to pull a limb out of a, a dead limb out of a tree, and the whole tree fell over. And <laughs> well, you kind of wanted that. that <laughs> I wasn't upset that it did because <laughs> we went for the fire, but. <laughs> It was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> and that's the uh, apple butter. Yeah, that was the apple butter too. <laughs> when I uh, went down there and I woke up early that morning for some reason. And I heard these two gentlemen talking and I just thought it was just the most amusing conversation. Right? It was like, guys asked another guy. He said, uh, man, you like apple butter? And he's like, man, you know, it's all right. <laughs> and he was just like, my girl is all about b apple butter. And he's like, I don't, I don't even know what that shit is. <laughs> and he's like, oh man, I gotta be telling, I gotta be straight with you, man. I don't know shit from apple butter. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just such a, it was just such a funny exchange. It was, it was just like, Hey, do you like apple butter? Yeah. Apple butter's great. I don't know what apple butter is. Yeah. I don't know what apple butter is either. <laughs> 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 and then it wasn't that he said I don't know shit from apple butter that was his exact words I don't know shit from apple butter <laughs> I gotta be honest with you man I don't know shit from apple butter <laughs> but it was it, <laughs> and so now every once in a while we just have the need to say apple butter <laughs> as a non sequitur there is a common brand I think it's like I want to say it's like Musulman or something Musulman apple butter Musul mix butter Oh, apple butter? Musselman's, yeah. Musselman's apple butter. Uh, not a fan. Oh, yeah? Much prefer the Kroger brand, actually, which was huh. a vast surprise to me. Musselman's had kind of like a metallic taste to it to me, I think. Okay. There's something that tasted off about it, but the, uh, the Kroger's, it's sweet, but it's really good. Huh. Interesting. It's amazing how uh, far a lot of store brands have come, and that's like... Walmart and um, Kroger bakeries, how much they've improved in their baked goods. Oh, yeah? Yeah, within the last, like, 10 years, especially the last several. Why would you think that might be? Any idea? I don't know exactly. Just, um, I don't know, perhaps uh, some better... Well, there's been a huge thing about, like, uh, organic, everybody moving toward, you know, healthier organic, no preservatives and stuff like that, fresher foods and things, so... Um, that probably has something to do with it. Yeah, I could see that. I got a good spot for these necessarily. We have lots of tasty things these days. Used to be you couldn't find it. Everything would have that's it just wouldn't taste good or it had a weird aftertaste or it would be really dried out. Now you got lots of good options. Yeah, I, I, I hear a lot of uh, people that you know will use the the bakeries at the grocery stores with uh, good success. So, all right, I'm looking for some pieces. I must have misplaced. I misplaced my castle. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen my castle? <laughs> I seem to have misplaced it somewhere. Well, I feel I, like I should be saying Fadji Lavash. I don't know what that means. Get the cow. What is it? <laughs> get the cow. Fashion la vache. Get the cow? Yeah. Why would we be getting cows? <laughs> well, I also feel like I need some coconuts to make some horse noises. Oh, okay. I yeah. got you. You got it now. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I will now fart in your general direction. <laughs> you smell Please don't. <laughs> you smell elderberries. God damn it. <laughs> you smell elderberries and something, something. <laughs> Well, I'm kind of confused here, Randy, because I had like several more pieces that I'm just not finding, which I guess I really shouldn't be that surprised, right? Because we did just recover from a flood. <laughs> Even if it was only three inches, everything down here has been moved. Which, hey, you, you kind of celebrated National Day of Unplugging unintentionally. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that's good. There you go. That was what, Friday, what, March what day 6th. was that? Friday, March 6th. Yep. 6th. <laughs> yep. There was a lot of unplugged. <laughs> on that day 
Um, all right. Oh, here we go. I found a couple extra pieces. I like these are one of my favorite pieces, Randy. I don't even know what these were for originally. I was like, these look like little castle turrets that I could probably put on <laughs> things. I was like, oh, yep, look, extra <laughs> pair. Yesterday was National Get Over It Day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> National Just Get Over Yourself Day. Is there an It Ain't About You Day? Oh, tomorrow's National Johnny Appleseed Day. Oh, yeah? So I heard something. I don't know if it's true or not, but not, I heard through your own background. Like when we were, what were you taught about Johnny Appleseed when we were kids? Um, that there's isn't there a song? Like yeah, a little song or something? I, I was taught that he was a robot <laughs> that came Lies. from Lies. Uh, the Antares cluster, <laughs> and that uh, his job was to poison the human race, not just with apples, but also with words. <laughs> and that's why we hate Johnny and everybody named Johnny. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that's what that meant. Uh, there was a cartoon that they used to show us. I don't know. I was probably in the second yeah. grade and about Johnny Appleseed. And it would have been the same time as the cartoon of um, the Headless Horseman, right? Uh, Sleepy mm. Hollow, right? And Yeah. Well, I assume that's original. Maybe not. There might have been a way older one than that, potentially. Uh um, and, but yeah, that he went around, he wore a, 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 a pot oh, yeah. for a hat yeah. and that he went around planting seeds, just be bopping around. He was a walker of the earth and that he, he planted seeds and yeah, I don't know what the Johnny Appleseed song is, but I do believe it there was one. Uh, so okay. John, um, Johnny Appleseed okay. and Dave Blue Ox and yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, the Wikipedia yeah. for Johnny Appleseed. Uh huh. Um, yep. Okay. Do, 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 do. Says he was born. It's John Chapman. He was born in 1774 in Massachusetts, which looks like it. I mean, it's titling that it's British America at that time, I guess. Hmm. Uh, and died in 1845 at the age of 70. Choked on an apple. <laughs> Occupation, missionary and gardener. There you go, Johnny Appleseed. Was that his, uh, his job or his favorite positions? <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Do you like the gardener? Are you a fan of the gardener position? <laughs> uh, it helps better if you have hose. <laughs> American. So it says he was an American pioneer nurseryman who introduced apple trees to large parts of Pennsylvania, Ontario. Yeah, Ontario. There you go. What was what did you say there, where he was from? Ontario. <laughs> no. What? The Antares. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. See, that's why. That's that's the, that's the bastardization of the true story. <laughs> Ohio. They said he was from Ontario, right? But yeah. he wasn't. He was from yeah. <laughs> uh, Indiana and Illinois, as well as northern. Um, the northern countries or counties, sorry, of present day West Virginia. He's from the north, way north. <laughs> it's still, uh, I'm from the deep south. American legend, while still alive, due to his kind, generous ways, his leadership in conservation and the symbolic importance he attributed to apples. Uh, Okay, so the, well, the thing I had heard uh, a few years ago... I heard that he was an ass man. <laughs> ...was that he wasn't just planting these seeds for no reason. Like, it gave the impression that he was going, like, going along the whole way, like, paving the way for, for, um, for, um... Like settlers. pilgrims or whatever, yeah, settlers, uh, by planting trees so that they would have food or whatever along the route. Uh, but but this was saying that there was some little law that said 
if you planted a tree on a property, you owned it. You owned it. You were that was a way to claim rights to that land. So he owns America. Yeah. It's actually the United <laughs> Apple Seeds of America. Or so United States of Apple He was seed. just going around like planting his seed everywhere, claiming everything. Well that whoa, that, huh. that that's a whole new <laughs> Yes. The green whole new take on it. Something like this. But this, I don't see that this has any reference to that, so I wonder where I'd heard that from. I don't remember. The apple seed. Oh, no. Although it's, it goes in line with a lot of the stuff that you discover recently about like, you know, we were taught that, as kids we were taught that Christopher Columbus was the first to discover America. And, and now you realize that, oh, yeah. He actually never even set foot in North America at all. And he definitely wasn't the first to discover it. And like a bunch of slew of other things that are like, oh, maybe we shouldn't <laughs> be celebrating these sort of things. <laughs> yeah. Because these people like, there's slavery these involved and, or... and spreading of sexual diseases and yeah, not good stuff. Good times, good times. <laughs> Hey, what I look like, Christopher Colombo? <laughs> All right. We're working so it. what were we talking about? We were talking about, before we started, uh, about some VR stuff that we've been getting into. Uh-huh. Did you want to talk about that at all? No. No? Okay. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can talk VR. I'm, I'm very... That's one of the things, uh, post-flood, is I have not been able to play any um vr mm -hmm. and i was really enjoying the the vr uh, table tennis mm. i really it was it's a perfect game i think for that for that sort of thing right because mm -hmm. it's a space that's smaller than a full table that i can put the headset on untethered play a couple games take it off and you know i'm done mm -hmm. in and out you know and that's really good because it's like i'm not over vr exhausted or anything like that so yeah yeah that one you seem to adjust to really quickly and i was having some more some problems adjusting to it yeah um but we both had the situation, me more so than you, but you said you encountered it as well, where you wanted to put your paddles down on the table. table. I, I, so I <laughs> and found, like, and I, walk away, <laughs> like drop them on the table and walk away. But the table's not really there. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I at least wanted that when my paddle went hit the table, yeah. I wanted it to buzz. Oh, yeah, I yeah. thought that would have been helpful just for me to know. that. Was, <laughs> but um, that, and then the other one was, I was um, uh, without even thinking about it, I was trying not to step on the ball when it would be on oh, the yeah. floor. I kept I kept being more worried that I was going to step on the ball. Or you like, went you went to chase the ball. I went yeah. to chase the ball. I went to pick the yeah. ball up off the ground, but you don't need to because all you have to do is hit just the right or the left trigger button, and it automatically yeah. puts it back in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. That so I, I did really uh, find that to be intriguing. <laughs> the whole experience was was interesting. I tried. Uh, I went to get my Samsung Gear VR up uh -huh. and running. Um, but I can't, it won't register my phone. Huh. So it's supposed to, as soon as you plug your phone in, the phone is supposed to register that it's plugged into the headset and like automatically open Oculus or something. Um, cause that's who they were partnered with was Oculus. Okay. And I was trying to look that up and it was saying that that was a common issue with it was that, uh, that connectivity, um, there being issues with uh, the connections. Um, but beyond like taking everything, it, uninstalling everything from the phone, there's like five or six different ones that one thing said you have to make sure you do in order, like uninstall them and reinstall them. I didn't feel like messing with all that. Uh, yeah. And then some other people said that they did that and it didn't work for them. So I think I've experienced this on the internet. You're telling me that you heard somebody say something in the comments and say, this worked for me. And then right after that, you'll get somebody who says, I did this and man, this worked for me. And then you get the yeah. next one and says, I tried this and I had no success whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it worked for some people and not others, which is yeah. common. Um, part of the problem is that they tried to make that unit, the Samsung Gear, work with so many different phones uh, and different sizes of phones sure. and stuff uh -huh. that uh that accounts for a lot of the the problems with the connectivity because they have 
like this thing that you can switch out for it to be like USB-C or USB or a micro USB. Um, and then just the different sizes of phones. There was a slide to make a, a, accommodate a larger or smaller uh, phone screen size and everything. So all that kind of, I think, added to the problems with the connectivity issues. Sure. Um, but yeah, I was really upset. I was, I was really looking forward to it. I thought I was going to be able to figure it out. But then I found out that I guess sometime, maybe like six months ago, it looks like Oculus finally came out and said, yeah, we're not supporting them anymore. Uh, so I don't know, you would think it would still work with, um, as long as things haven't been updated, you would think it would still work with what I have, but I think it's just the connectivity problem for some reason. I don't know why I didn't have that problem before with it. And all of a sudden now I, I totally do, but right. Yeah. So I was sad about that, but I was playing with my, uh, PlayStation VR yeah. Um, checked out a few of the, the titles that I had downloaded. You bought some about that. games that were on sale, yeah? Yeah, I bought a bunch of stuff that was on sale, like really cheap. What was, uh, um, out of the stuff that you got, what was your, your most favorite? Um, let's see. I don't know, so are was... with any timelines today? I know we started. No, I don't have any timelines. Okay. I've, I'm wide open today. Okay. Um, let's see. Out of your, were your favorites out of the, the sale items that you got? Yeah, I got... Uh, what is it called? Doom. Oh yeah. VFR. And that's a they single... call it VFR because it's a reference to the BFG. Oh, so the, the F so, did stand for yeah. frigging. Yeah, okay. it does stand for frickin'. Uh, <laughs> <nice>. Um <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Uh, there's a problem with. I think that was like a 2016 game or something. So. Um, it uses the teleportation uh -huh. and, and it relies heavily on that because ah, that Doom, be Doom was famous for, I guess, for like quick, being able to quickly move around and, yeah. strife and, and shoot while you're moving. I couldn't, play that, I couldn't play that game using teleporting. That would be really, really, really hard. Yeah. So it's all about teleporting. The thing that gets me though is, and I thought that the first time I played it that I had this ability a bit and I thought it was something I had to choose during the beginning of it because it leads you through a tutorial um but i haven't been able to find go back and i don't know if i have to delete my game to be able to access the tutorial again i don't know it's weird uh, but when i went back into replay it the second time to continue my game i couldn't do what i thought i had previously done which was move uh, with a more freedom than what i'm experiencing now where it's just the buttons on the left controller will like let you strife right or left or uh, sprint forward or backward. Um, and then there's a button on the right that will let you do a 180. But you okay. can't like make subtle turns. Yeah. So it's really frustrating. <laughs> it, yeah. it takes a lot to get used to because you walk into these, you get into situations where you're like, okay, well I have to like teleport over here into this wall and then do a 180 to be able to like try to face the direction I want to be facing. So that was a bit annoying. Um, and when I say a bit, I'm underplaying it because it was damn annoying. <laughs> but it takes a lot of getting used to. But other than that, it was fun. Um, it did kind of move slowly in that there, like the difficulty level started out really simple. Uh -huh. Like there's there were some masses on or zombies or whatever, demons. Um, but once you took care of them, you had like that whole area to just casually walk around and explore or whatever. And then you go to the next area and it's kind of the same thing. But then all of a sudden you're like in a boss fight situation where uh, you like triggered an event. And then it's like just waves of progressively harder mobs coming at you. And you're like, oh God, like it just seems to come out of nowhere. Uh, the difficulty level just ramps up, but it's, it's pretty exciting. You get those, uh, you get the uh, the experience where you're like ah! <laughs> the jump scares sort of thing where something's right behind you all of a sudden while you're trying to kill the thing that's trying to kill you from the front. You know, that's that's cool. That's cool. Uh, what else? There were some other cool things. Um, it's like Playroom, PlayStation's VR Playroom, I think is what's called something like that, and it has several different games and apparently. Uh, 
you can play it with other people and they can use their phones and stuff, I guess, as additional controllers. Um, and so they can join, I'm not sure how they, how they play with you on this. Well, the one I was playing was only for one or two people. They have ones that are like up to five people, I think, possibly more. Um, but the way it was, the, the way the game worked was really cool. And like it shows you holding your controller. Your controller is part of the game. Like you see it in the game. Which game is this? Sorry. Uh, I think it's the, the Playroom. I think is what it's called. The VR, the PlayStation uh, VR Playroom. Okay. Um, let's see if it looked up. So da -da -da. Uh, well, that looks like it's hard to tell from what they're showing here. That's the same thing or different. That one's interactive. That one like shows a picture of you in your room and it's like augmented reality situation. So, oh, I know how I can check. I gotta log into my. What are you? What are you doing? Are you still setting up the castle? Yeah. And I'm trying to use my go-go gadget arms, and my hips are really cranky from all the work over the weekend. Yeah, we about killed ourselves trying to get those sticky tiles off the. I know. Off yeah. Off the ground. Yeah, and then so then I had you know two days after that. So <sighs> that was uh, of the day that you came though. That man, that was by far the most helpful. Cool. And the, uh, I'm glad I could help you, bro. Yeah, man, I really appreciate that. It was a huge help. That was the day that I definitely needed you the most. Because that's, it was like, you remember, I kind of like when you first started off and I was like, I was sitting down, I was using like the grips and the things. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, these aren't, they were coming up pretty easy because where they were wet, they still, yeah. they, they did come up, but you get some of those that were dry and man, and it, or it'd be, it'd be wet and it'd come up easy and then you get to a part where it was dry, right? So you're like, you're pulling and it's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> yep. And you're just hitting all those muscles that you're not used to. Yeah, using. those last few tiles especially were like extra. I don't know if they'd add extra time to dry or it just didn't get wet, as wet in those areas or what. But That area in particular, I did have a lot of fans on. So I think yeah, it was a combination. Really dry. They were a pain in the butt. Plus we were tired. Yeah, I think it was just a combination. Every combination. Like all adding together. <laughs> yes. I agree. Uh, oh, I agree. No. Check your... Okay. All right. Well... Let me see here. I'm not 100% here, anybody, but you can take a look at what we've got started here. Let me see if I can switch to our. <laughs> My mom is, is listening to the. Oh. To the cat. She uh, sent me some stuff about Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's the yeah, that's the cartoon I remember. There is a song, uh, The Lord's Been Good to Me, Johnny. The Lord's Jesus. been good to me, and so <laughs> I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need. The sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Amen. What I do remember just, that. I'm wow. <laughs> the Lord's been good to me. Wow, that's all I needed, Randy. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> The Lord's been good to me. Yeah, and that's he sings that in the uh, in that cartoon. <laughs> yep. Wow. It's a cute little cartoon. Yeah, it is. Of course, I'm sure if we watch it, there's probably some like racist stuff in there, just because that's <laughs> because you know, like all these cartoons that you used to love as a kid, you watch back, because and it's like people. really racist. <laughs> and you like they didn't. It wasn't racist back then, but now it's really racist. Yeah, on Disney Plus, uh, they're like. Uh, they make apologies on some of the cartoons before you watch them, I guess. And it says they won't show a lot of stuff anymore. It, it says uh, has outdated cultural depictions mm. is what they the term that they they use for racist. What is going on here? Why won't this take? Sun, 
rain, apple seed. <laughs> so okay. can we do another one? You can start riffing on that. <laughs> yeah, I think that we want to do another one, Randy, where it's um, okay. because the my man was was spreading a lot of seed, <laughs> right? Yeah, and uh, I can just see, he's like mine. <laughs> Mine, jeez, because <laughs> it seems like that's what he was doing. He was claiming. <laughs> he was claiming with his name, and his name was Johnny. And you need to respect that. <laughs> you need to respect Johnny. All right. Wow, did you do that extra close to the mic? I just got the delayed audio in my ear, oh, and that was <laughs> was it. I was moving, so yeah. You, you didn't that particularly intimate. <laughs> you you need to. You know that's what hilarious. I mean? Johnny, you know what I'm talking about. You need to recognize. <laughs> that sounds very Johnny. different. Just you across the room as opposed to. <laughs> yeah, I had moved <laughs> the mic and it was up on my face and I was just standing. And so, yeah, it was about as close as I ever get to the mic. That's funny. <laughs> All right, Randy. I think that this is probably a good enough spot for us to, to have a little closure. Um, as we take a look here at what we have. The start of our quasi town seeing that we spent about an hour and 45 minutes getting started today but hey you know we we got to learn on right so yep. that's all good um there is one thing why don't we take a, a quick a quick one um for a, a quick close we'll uh just t touch on our uh, our mental health minute and with our mental health uh minute Today, I was watching a, a documentary, Randy, on, I told you about uh, Fred Rogers. Mm -hmm. And mailman's delivering something, apparently. So the dogs are going a little nuts. And, uh, man, what a, what, a, what, a, what a guy, man, Mr. Rogers. I mean, in all honesty, just, it sounds silly, but I say this with, with all the sincerity that I can, is that dude was as punk rock as anything. Because... <laughs> They're just this the amount of internal strength that it takes for a person to know that they are square as fuck <laughs> and to insist on being that way because it's truly who they are and to have the vision that he did that nobody saw, right? It wasn't like, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, it makes total sense, right? <laughs> It's like at the beginning of the documentary, it says, you take everything that we've learned up to this point about making television, like when Fred Rogers came out, you know, take everything that you've known or even today about what you do to make media, you do the complete opposite. And that's the Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers show. <laughs> right. And it's like, there's nothing. It's like, he would just like sit there with silence. And like one of them, he's like, you want to know what a minute's, how long a minute is? Let's, let's just sit here. And so it was, he's, he loves silence. He would all the time be putting silence in the show and just all these things where it's just like, just so contrary and that he, but yet he just really believed in it. And I was like, man, what a, what a, what a real hero, I think. And it's like, you know, at the end it was like, you're like, all right, so what's the bad things they're going to tell me about, you know, the kid, the lawsuit about the child, you know, and as nope, there's none of that. And uh, the worst was his son said that sometimes when he got angry, he started to sound like King Friday, the, you know, or lady which is hilarious or lady whoever he would take those personalities <laughs> on and uh just yeah just really 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 amazing but the point being was that he he said uh at one point in there about that you have to expect the unexpected life will throw you the unexpected so you, you can't say i don't i didn't you know i don't know it's like life will throw you unexpected things so you can't keep being surprised when life throws you unexpected things and he says that how you deal with that is really you know defines the character of who you are and uh i thought that was really powerful and especially having been going through a time of unexpectedness uh it helped me to try to frame my thoughts about how I, how i wanted to handle myself in this situation so that was my my share of today for the mental health minute you have any anything you wish to uh, no, I don't. I don't really have anything for today. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I guess just when um, uh, unexpected stuff hits, 
like flooding of the basement, for instance, <laughs> <laughs> and your workspace and everything. Uh, yeah, just take a breath and yeah, you'll get through it. Yeah. And, you know, my dad like say you don't eat a steak by throwing the whole thing in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. You, you cut it into pieces and yeah. you chew them one at a time. And, or like Alan Watts says, all you ever got to do is wash that dish that's in front of you. <laughs> you know, you get yeah. overloaded thinking that you got to spend your every day washing dishes. All you got to do is just take care of that dish that's in front of you. And when you finish that one, look to see what the next dish is. And it certainly helps to make it a lot more manageable. I know when it comes to moving that I, I there was a couple of times where I started to feel suffocated from the move, the last move. And you just got to it's like. You don't have to do the whole movie. You just got to do one piece of the movie. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do. And I think that's the problem that we're having uh, as humans is that we're we're every place except for right now, right? We're not we're we're we're, we're dwelling on the past. We're worrying about the future, mm -hmm. and so many, so little of our resources are actually dedicated to the now, which is the only thing that you actually really ever have. So, so yeah, Randy, I think that's a good uh, little mental health minute for us today. And uh, again, uh, anybody who ends up listening this far, um, you know, we stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, today was our first attempt to do a Twitch stream. We'd like to be able to do that more. And I'll, uh, Randy, I'll, I'll push that a little bit better on the Instagram as well and uh, promote it. But um, yeah, we stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, usually there's a lot more craft uh, going on today. I needed to try to get some of this stuff that we've been working on with the castle up out so I can try to work on putting stuff away. It was, these castle was taking up so much space that I wanted to try to get it up and out. So that's why we did that today. Uh, Randy, I think, I don't even know on Thursday's show, I'm not even sure what we'll be working on. Oh, I know one of the things I wanted to work on Randy on the next show is I got these uh, spell effects uh, that we had looked at. I got it for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I want to paint these up. So these are one thing I think we might be working on. Cool. And then also we've been working on our dragon. And, and we also had our Cthulhu that we've been working on. And he's right here. These all did successfully withstand the flood. Let's see here. Get a better shot on this guy. So... Oh, nice. and with the <laughs> please like, subscribe, and share. Crazy, insane. All right. So with that, Randy, I think that we will uh, bid everybody adieu and a tray. And uh, we'll leave with the. Uh... Oh yeah, you know what, um, <laughs> Randy? There is something that is important to mention. What's that? That uh, with the the liking, the sharing, and the subscribing, when they hit the subscribe button, they'll get access to the bell icon, uh -huh. and when they click that, magic happens. <laughs> See? Uh -huh. So somebody must have clicked it right then, because when they click it, I hear it every time. So I know. I'm like I'm like Santa Claus. I know when you've been naughty. I know when you've been nice. <laughs> Or, Randy, you know, when we were cleaning, I was having you listen to some of that Funkadelic. Uh -huh. And uh, I think it's Uncle Jam, that Uncle Jam song, which is so funny, right? Because I'm your drill sergeant, right? And, uh, <laughs> and he, he says, uh, now some of you out there aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I know that. I know when some of them people are out there doing, not doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so ring that bell. And, uh, and yeah, and look for us on, on Thursday. So, Randy, you have anything else? I'll, not I'm Never cowardly, never cruel, never give up, never give in. Anything else, Randy? Uh, donate blood if you can. Donate blood. There's a crisis right now, and they need uh, platelets and red blood cells, I believe. And there's a, like a 20, 15 or $20 uh, gift certificate that they're offering, gift card. Oh, yeah. Um, for at least for new donators of those items. So check it out. Redcross.com, I believe. Redcross.org has uh, all the information you should need along those lines. Right on. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we can wave to the good people. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Johnny Q, Brandy here at Master Control. <laughs> uh, thank you for your time and attention. We appreciate it. 
And uh, go ahead, Randy, you can send us out to a little bounce. Bow, 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 bow.